Welcome to the 99th episode of Sensibly Cynical. Yes, you heard me right. Episode 99. Today, I will be joined by... Dun, dun, dun. Tyson Sainer. Of the Anti-Social Show and the Succotash Shut-In. We will be talking everything jackass. That's right. Johnny Knoxville, Steve-O, Wee Man, and the entire gang. So, sit back, buckle your seatbelt. You are in for a wild ride. Welcome to Sensibly Cynical's one and only jackass podcast. And with me on the line... He is the co-host of the Anti-Social Show and a contributor to the Succotash Shut-In, Tyson Saner. What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? It's going good. We're a little laggy on the connection, though. You know. Just a tad. But it's it's, uh, it's audio anyway, so we're good. My co-host on the Social Show calls it Podcast Gremlins. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of ironic that we're a little little rough because that's... the type of show we're going to be covering today. A little rough. Jackass. So, yeah. y- you know, I think we're similar in uh, age and everything. So what do you remember about Jackass? Because I know what I remember, but I want to know what you remember first. Well, yeah, let's see. Uh, so the first, I, I remember bef- just before there was Jackass, I remember CKY. There was a land speed video with Liam Margera and Brandon DiCamillo and uh, Ray Gion and Rob himself. And they put out like skateboarding and music and prank type video stuff. Some stunts and also, but a lot of skateboarding. And I always liked skateboarding videos. Uh, never could really do it myself, but I always appreciated the art. And, um, uh, you know, it was really f- funny and strange stuff. Then I didn't really watch TV, but I had heard that that these guys plus some other people were doing this thing called Jackass and then it went on for some time and then suddenly there was a movie. Well, suddenly, after some time there was a movie. And that's how I was first really introduced to people like Johnny Knoxville and mm-hmm. steve Yeah, it was interesting how it yeah. uh, all started because there was this guy, Jeff Tremaine of Big Brother Magazine. I don't know if you know this story. Uh, he's one of the ones that created it along with uh, Knoxville and Spike Jones, a guy named Spike Jones. But... So Jeff contacted Johnny and said, "Hey, will you do some? We do a stun or whatever." Found out about about the craziness and you know, and was like, "Hey, will you do a um, some you know stunts and stuff and make a video?" And he was like, "Sure, why the fuck not?" <laughs> you know, and uh, and that's the that's kind of the birth of it. And they were like, "Well, crap, this is actually catching on. It got popular, so it debuted." Um, October 1st, 2000. Wow. And it was, it was basically, the premise was 20 to 22 minutes of crazy, um, you know, nonsense, crazy shit. Yeah, oh yeah. And if you look at the YouTube videos, people were, you know, going down flights of stairs in a kayak. <laughs> I mean, just, just off the wall stuff, you know? One of those kitty wagons, you know, and it just, it was, it was so off the wall that it was genius. There was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of uh, stunt type stuff. A lot of what I call um, reaction pranks where right. you know, there's costume people walking down the street and doing, interacting, and then somebody way off with a camera looking at mm-hmm. the other people reacting to them. Um, fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, it, then there's really disgusting stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Well, there was nine guys. Bam, Margera, Steve-O, Wee Man, was it Ryan, Dunn, God rest his uh, his soul there, I mean, he's not around anymore, Dave England, was it Chris Pontius, I'm missing somebody, Aaron, uh, uh, Aaron McGahey, yeah, and Preston, isn't there Preston too? Preston Lacey? Yeah, that's him, that's the last, I think that's nine, right, I covered it all. My favorite was, uh, was Wee Man, you know, they would shoot him out of stuff, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oh yeah, I met him in the. Uh, met him. I I first experienced him in uh, the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I saw him kick himself in the head. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. That, mm-hmm. In that movie. 
Well, yeah, the first video they they uh, made was actually uh, had a funny title. Shit, that was the first video, like raw video. And then, it's just shit. yeah, and <laughs> yeah, and then there was the second one. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> that was funny. I like your deadpan. You, you're uh, you're a good host. I can tell you have that deadpan humor. I like it. Uh, I don't think I don't think you mean to be deadpan, or do you? But it's just it, that's the vibe I get from your style. Is that am I wrong, or is that right? Uh, I think it's a little both. I, I tend to I try to actively listen, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't hear things clearly, but sometimes I just repeat things to make sure I've heard them clearly, and uh, an occasional I'll comment on them, and usually. Mm-hmm. Usually it's a silly comment, but I don't crack a smile. That's just kind of yeah. I, mean, I can smile. I'm capable of smiling. Yeah, I, I smile all. The, I smile all the time. I do nothing but it. Um, so let's take a little uh, diversion here. So I wanted to thank you before we continue. I wanted to thank you for showcasing the podcast on you know a recent episode of the Suck Attached Shut In. I wanted to thank you for that. First, the show was created by Mark Hershon, and he used to put together a show with like six clips, and he did that for many episodes. And then he was asking people to send in clips, and I was like, "Well, I like podcasts, so any mm-hmm. soundcasts at some point." Like right, that. right, so I like that. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, so I'll just so I was like, I'll just clip some of these things that I've been listening to and send them to him, and then I just became a regular contributor, mm-hmm. and then that went on for years. And then he mm-hmm. uh, decided to he, to take a break from hosting, so I became the host for mm-hmm. uh, last couple of. But then the show is going to go out on hiatus. It went, not, it went on a really short hiatus in, in the early part of 2020 here. And then as mm-hmm. the quarantine wore on, we decided to start trying to put out weekly shows that were smart. Right. So we each do like three clips. Well, I do three clips. And uh, yours is one of the ones that I uh, came across because uh, you follow me on Instagram. And that's, I mm-hmm. tend to notice that. I would, oh, look, there's a person now. Oh, <laughs> well, I'll listen to it. Yeah. It just makes it easier for me because otherwise I have to... I, otherwise, my, I, I come across podcasts yeah. by hearing them talked about on other podcasts. So, well, yeah, yeah, there was, um, yeah. I forgot the name of the website, but there was a website that did that kind of did something similar to what you're doing. But what they would do is they would do reviews, which was oh. a crazy amount of monotonous work. I don't know uh, who thought of that, but I think yours is a more concise and not easy, but, you know, condensed version of that. No, like they would literally do all the research, find podcasts, put them, put them on a list, you know, to be the term, you know, to be checked out. Because obviously there was a shitload of, no pun intended, <laughs> but there was a bunch of, uh, <laughs> there was a bunch of um, podcasts that the guy accumulated or whoever it was. And, and eventually he got tired or they got, whoever, I don't know, but eventually. Eventually, the website got tired of it and stopped. But I mean, that's a brilliant idea if you think about it. Put, make a review website. But then again, that's outdated. I mean, it's an actual website. You know what I mean? That's like outdated. I think that's what also happened. What's your thoughts on that? Like, have you heard of some something like that before, or is that the first you've heard of a website like that? Well, I, technically, um, the uh, Mark Hershon, he still listens to other podcasts or soundcasts that don't. Uh, that, he, that we don't feature on the show, and he reviews them for Vulture. Okay, so it's similar, yeah. He's been doing that for a, a long time, but he's, oh. he's, he's really he's really more of a journalist than I am. I like yeah. To, I just like I'll, I'll 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 listen to the shows. I'll try and make sure I got everybody's uh, social uh, media information, like so I can put on the blog and whatnot, and links to their shows and whatnot. I, mm-hmm. I, that's what I tend to do, and then and then it's a matter of like you know just listening to it and trying to figure out a good conversation chunk like what's a good beginning what's a good ending mm-hmm. uh you know so I'll t- that's why i'll tend to listen to multiple episodes even if i may never listen again and i uh, one of the things is that i will listen again but i listen to un- hundreds of podcasts oh really so I get to hear, yeah yeah i get to hear you're one of those guys <laughs> just cumulatively over the years i yeah it's many 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 podcasts uh, oh my god Doug Benson ones, um, regular ones like Birdcast. I used to listen to Birdcast every episode. I used mm-hmm. to listen to every episode of the Todd Glass Show. Uh, I used to listen to every episode of Comedy Bang Bang. Find it. Mm-hmm. Where are you from originally? Where am I from? 
Yeah. Uh, Northern California, a place called Arkeha. Born and raised? Born and raised. Born, well, technically born in Eureka because there wasn't a hospital in Arcata at the time when I was born in 1974. Oh, uh, there you go, given the exact date. Yeah, you're, you're so young, man. <laughs> You're still young. Hey, I was born in. I'll disclose it too. It's only fair. I was born in 1987. So, oh, oh you're the same age as my friend Corey. I mean, I'm working. Story. I'm working on the 30s. You know. But uh, yeah, let's get back to let's get back to uh, Jackass. So, okay. tell me about your experience with the show. Were you like, yeah, there it is. Well, we're on video, but. You can't see that, guys, but he's holding up a... Uh, now, what is that? The original um, Jackass movie, or what? which one is that? This is the special edition uh, Jackass the movie unrated, is what it says on the sticker. So okay, so it was two is, point. It was 2.5. Uh, oh, no, this one isn't 2.5. I, I did actually get... I think it did come across 2.5, and it was labeled as such. This one is just... Uh, yeah, I don't know. So there was the regular edition, the special edition right. like this, and then 2.5. Oh, wait, actually, I think 2.5. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. This is one. This is one. Okay, is Jack... See, this, here's what... It, this is a good segue, Tyson. So, <laughs> 2002 was Jackass the movie, because they did that after the MTV run ended. Okay. So, that's when they did Jackass the movie, and then... um, And then what happened was... Johnny Knoxville decided to do the show Wild Boys. I don't know if... Did you ever see that show? I've seen one episode of Wild Boys. Well, he guest starred, but it was really... He helped produce it, obviously, but it was with Steve-O and Chris. Uh, Chris Pontius? Yeah, and then they would have guest, guest stars like Met, Method Man and Tony Hawk, to name a few, you know, just a few. Oh, yeah. I've seen... Yeah, I saw Tony Hawk on... Uh, uh, he was in Jackass. He did the he was, and then he also did Wild Boys. He was part of that culture, you know, that skate culture. I mean, that's what it was. That's why. That's why all the skits you see, or a lot of the skits, lean were skate heavy because that's that's what it. You know, that's what drew it back then. People were like, "Oh, the X Games." Tony Hawk was doing the seven twenty, you know, and then somehow they connected. You know, late nineties, early two thousands, and this was a crazy phenomenon. Like, I know we're gonna we're gonna get the Jackass four. You know, it's supposed to come out in twenty twenty one. We're gonna talk about that, but. It was a crazy phenomenon, right, Tyson? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, speaking of Tony Hawk, um, well, I, mean, I played a couple of the games, not uh, very many of them, because I also play video games a lot. But I played Tony Hawk Underground 2, and in that, the jackass characters, you can play as them. So, like, you can play Steve-O, <laughs> yes. at least Steve-O, and, like, Phil's in it. Phil Margera is somewhere in the game as well. So, and, in fact, not only Steve-O in the game, but... But you can see his his tattoo of himself on his back in the game character, like he does in the, uh, you know, he's got that back tattoo of himself. <clears throat> yeah, well, they're char- I mean, they're people, but they're characters too. I mean, they're more, you know, they're large. They were larger in life in the early two thousands and mid, you know, all the way through the run. I mean, these guys were all over um, satire magazines and stuff. Um, who was the one that you like, not like, but who was the one like you gravitated towards that you thought was really the coolest? If there was one. <laughs> Gosh, that's tough. Uh, say, you know, somewhere between Steve-O and, uh, and, um, Bam. I thought, uh, Bam was my first, ex, you know, the first experience with them again. So I was, I was introduced to the ideas with Bam for this, through the CKY video, uh, and VHS. And then, so like, Steve-O I met in the movie, and uh, I keep saying met as though, I've, you know... No, I, I understand. It feels like it. That's That goes back to the culture I was saying. You feel like you meet these guys. So I get it. And I've heard Steve-O's podcast recently, too. Oh, yeah. What was the name of that talk? You, you told me about that. What's the name of that? Uh, it's called Wild Bride. Hey, like he needs any more publicity. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, I'm sure he gets it's enough. Just, I guess. I don't know. I mean, just like, so, well, he was doing stand-up for a while. Uh, so I guess this, you know, it's just, I guess he likes talking. He did it with Bam, and uh, they, they mentioned, uh, that's why I found out that Jackass 4 was going to be a thing. Yeah, yeah. So Jackass 4. Wait a minute. Before we get there, I want to talk about my favorite. I have a favorite, uh, Tyson. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bad Grandpa. That was my shit. 2013, Johnny Knoxville. Did you ever see that one? You know. Um, 
Well, you know, they do the old makeup in the first movie, so that's. Uh, yeah, the key word there is bad. Yeah, I don't think the reviews were very good. Like for the research I did for this, I did I did a deep research on every movie but that one. <laughs> but uh, I had to at least I had to at least recognize that. I think I saw that in theaters. I don't know. I maybe rented it. Rented it. I will say I was introduced actually to Johnny Knoxville outside of Jackass because uh, I saw the movie Men in Black Two, and he's in that. And oh then, yeah. Uh, then when I saw Jackass, I'm like, it's a dude who was in Men in Black too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all right, like all right. Jackass Four. So it keeps getting pushed back, right? When is supposed to come? Um, be released this year, but obviously due to the coronavirus and everything going on, it, I think it, it keeps getting pushed back, right? That's what I heard. Yeah, um, but you know, it's probably safe. Better. <laughs> Are to say better safe than sorry with what these guys put themselves through, but you know they're smart enough to not put everybody in harm's way. Well, life. social social distancing, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, so what month are we? Did they say? Do you know when exactly it's supposed to come out? I I didn't. didn't remember I think it was time. like I, I think, think it's mid. I think it's this time next year. I think that's what. Uh, I may be off on that, but. That sounds right. So let's go with it. <laughs> but you know what was crazy about this? These movies is that everything. Well, <laughs> yeah, good point. But I'm talking about financially. I I, I, I should have I should have specified. What'd you say? That they were so popular. No, no, I should have specified that I was thinking financially. But I should have specified that. My apologies. But financially, as we go on you know, the budget became more and more because they wanted to be more meticulous and they wanted to be top the other one. Like, you can't just do the same stuff every time. I mean, they do the same stuff, but they want they make it more, you know, elaborate. They up their game. Yeah, so, like, the budgets, I have them here. I think the first one was, like, $5 million, and then the second one was, like, Nine, I think, or no, twelve. I think I don't know. They're all around the same, you know. Five and then teens and then twenty, you know. So, sure. why do you think that they just kept doing it right in a row there? Like, don't you think that it was a little saturated at that time, or do you think that it was so popular that they just said, "All right, we'll just keep doing it until it dries." If I were to guess, I'd say it's uh, probably the keep striking the iron while it's hot. And also, I mean, these are young guys that probably realize that what they're doing is going to really come back and hurt them in 20 years as far as their physical damage they're taking. Yeah. Even though they're going to be doing it now 20 years later. Right. Um, it's crazy. They're just adrenaline junkies. Because so if like, you... Let's just keep doing these. Mm-hmm. Like people don't want to see them anymore. Because if you think about it, looking on what I... On, on the uh, research I did, Johnny Knoxville basically doesn't stop. He goes from the TV show to the movie... Um, to Wild Boys, and then Jackass 2 was actually in the last year of Wild Boys. Well, he was doing both. I mean, sure, he wasn't he wasn't the main person on Wild Boys, but um, you bet your ass he was involved. And um, it was, and then crazy, and then on top of that, Jackass 3D, you know. Oh, uh, I'd heard, yeah, I see, you know, I've never actually seen Jackass 3. It was 3D. It was 3D. But yeah, Jackass 3. That was the whole gimmick was, oh, it's in 3D, you know, special effects and stuff, you know, glasses. And uh, I'd heard one thing about it. I think it was something called the Pukano. Um. Yeah, I'm not super yeah, familiar just... with that exactly, exact, that exact thing. I mean, I, I think I may have yeah. seen it. I may have seen it once, but like I was saying, I think I, I think I even got kind of tired of it. Toward, just yeah I mean it's just this, I I said that on purpose kind of with the same shit because that's how I personally fe- felt when we got to the early you know when we got to the 2010s you know I was just like alright we've seen it the same song and dance you know he has and then of course Steve-O tried the uh, the spin off show Dr. Steve-O did you ever see that no <laughs> that was that was my favorite that was my favorite spin off it was so stupid it was like a diversion um, from 
he tried something different. He actually portrayed a doctor for males, <laughs> like, like you know, doing stunts and stuff. But like, yeah, it was just so stupid that it it worked for a little bit. What if there are clips on YouTube? I'll have to, Probably. I'll have to see what, what that looks like. But yeah, but if you think about this though. The runs on these things are limited. Like, there's not long distance on these shows because it wears out. Oh, yeah. I mean, the first movie, unrated even, is only 88 minutes. Yeah. You know, it's not, not <laughs> yeah. 90. It's not yeah. two hours. Yeah. You know? Exactly. But, I mean, it is wall to wall insanity. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy shit, yeah. I tend to lean more towards the stunts. Like, I don't like the stuff that involves vomit. That, that tends to gross me out. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, so it was just, you know, it was revolutionary. I mean, it was a reality show that no one really has seen. So do you see Jackass 4 being, like, the same, like, as the other ones as far as stunts? Or do you think they're going to do, like, newer stunts? Or that's pretty hard to do, I guess, huh? I guess we'll have to invent new bodily fluids. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are they what could they possibly do? I mean, maybe there'll be some interesting guest stars. Um, I mean, I would assume it's already filmed, right? Considering that we're going to have it. I'm sure they're in post-production. I don't know, though. My, my, my takeaway from listening to the pod, the, the, their conversation on Steve-O's podcast was that they hadn't quite finished filming it. Really? That, that's, what I, that's what I got out of it, but I could be wrong. That's, no, that's I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. Um, the thing about it is, though, do you think that MTV got tired of it? Is that do you know if that's why it stopped? Like in two thousand two? I wonder I what mean, happened only there. If, only if it stopped making money. Yeah. I or know. maybe maybe Johnny Knoxville was like, "All right, we'll just take this to the big time to the movie because that's when the movie happened." Coincidentally, after uh, MTV, so I'm sure maybe it was a combination of both. Maybe they thought, "Hey, it, it outgrew MTV." Three. There were three and then a movie. Mm-hmm. And then two, and then, you know, like I said, they didn't stop. They literally didn't stop this horsing around until, well, they haven't stopped, like I said. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could say they stopped in the, from 20, you know, from 2006 to 2010, but there were spinoffs, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Bam had his own spinoff, I think, right? What was his? Yeah, that's what it was. I mean, they all had spinoffs. And... What would you say, Tyson? Are they C-list celebrities? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I, it hard to, it's hard to grade them. I, I mean, I guess I would put Steve-O more toward B-list. Steve-O's pretty huge. He's I don't... still okay, as far as I know. And Knoxville is too. I would say B-list celebrities. <laughs> we men, on the other hand, I don't know. Some yeah, guy... I don't know. I, we, uh, you know, uh, there's uh, a acronym that there's this there's this podcast that I contribute to on Tuesday nights called Nooner Podcast. It's on the Kevin Smith uh, Smartcast Internet Radio Network. And okay. When, basically, what I do is a live Tumblr of their conversations. So if they mm -hmm. start talking about, let's say they're talking about Jackass, I'll look up Jackass on Wikipedia and grab <laughs> Tumblr, and, and I just keep doing that for two hours, basically. Well, yeah. they, their term for what they're doing is they call themselves minor internet radio personalities mm -hmm. or MERPs. Right. So, so I think of myself as a sub -merp. So I'm not mm -hmm. quite a minor, I'm just under a minor internet radio personality. So Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about your history of podcasting. I know you said you've listened to quite a few. What was the what was the I guess um, idea behind the anti social show? Oh. Like what's well, that about? Uh, so in twenty twelve I made friends uh, on the internet with a guy uh, named Hunter Block. He's my friend from New Jersey. Uh, and we started we sort of met because I was contributed to a podcast called Combat Radio, which still runs, uh, hosted by a guy named Ethan Duttenmeyer, who's actually going to be on a show uh, that we've recorded very soon. Um, I just have to edit it. And uh, so that was 2012. And then we were friends for, you know, a few years. We just talked. And then at some point we started banging around the idea of what if we did our own podcast? Because mm. I had already been on a podcast for, for 10 episodes. Uh, Smart Squad Podcasts? I think that's what it was, Smart Squad <laughs> Podcasts. And it was like five people, all from different parts of the, you know, it was like a person from Canada, there's two people in mm -hmm. Southern California, me in Washington, because I lived in Washington at the time, and then like, uh, uh, I 
can't remember who the other person was. It's Canada. Anyways, all over the U.S. and you know the connections were all pretty bad. Five way Skyping, if you can imagine that. And just yeah, uh, it's like uh, the precursor to uh, Zoom. Anyways, we're on Skype, but yeah. still, I think Zoom kind of took that and ran with it. But anyways, continue. <laughs> oh yeah, so it's fine. So like the show only went for ten episodes. It was amazing that we got together for ten ten different times. The Squad podcast was on. Uh, it's just on the blog and iTunes. Uh, and, and there's a guy who was called his his, his Twitter handle. Oh, we, we all met on Twitter. That's a big thing. Twitter if Twitter mm-hmm. hadn't existed, I don't know that I'd ever gotten into podcasting. Um. Yeah, probably not. It's hard to say. <laughs> or it would have been something else. And uh, <laughs> so Jamie, Jamie's bus driver was the name of the guy, the Twitter guy who gathered us together. And we were just the most frequent tweeters uh, when Kevin Smith went live with his Smodcast Internet Radio. Mm-hmm. It was like just live on a bunch of different podcasts, not just Smodcast, not just Tell Him Steve Day, mm-hmm. not just uh, Highlands of People's History, whatever it's called. Um Anyway, it was all this content, and we were all fans, and we were all kind of interactive with each other in the morning on Twitter, and then uh, Jamie's bus driver would put out uh, links that had to do with the show, I can't remember, but he decided to gather everybody together and try and do a collective show, and the goal was eventually to try and get on, uh, to be a show on the, on the actual Smartcast Internet Radio Network. That seems cool, so what is it about podcast? what is it about podcasting that draws, that like intrigues you so much, or that you enjoy about it? Like, What do you enjoy most about it? Mm-hmm. There's an aspect of of podcasting where there's yes interviews, narrative driven, like audio theater, like because I like I like radio theater basically. Mm-hmm. And then there's there's a lot of people who are doing improv who are also doing podcasts. So it's really it's this kind of theater of the mind, and often also you can hear a I, I like comedy a lot, so you'll get to hear. My only interaction or, or understanding of comedians was through their acts, you know, through their their sound, their stand up. Right. When I would hear podcasts, I would hear them just interviewed and being people. And some, you know, sometimes they just do their bits and be funny, and whatnot, mm-hmm. you know, and other times they talk about real things. And often they'd have their own podcast because it's something they could do when they're not on stage all the time. And that was a big draw because I so I, I basically get to hear people being people and having conversations. And mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. In, in a way, it kind of helped me be a more active listener. Yeah. What do you do for hobbies? I know you said uh, you're in uh, California. So what do you do for fun? I know things are a little rough now with the, you know, virus and everyone's you know staying inside for the um, and quarantining. But like in general, what's what do you enjoy like besides podcasting? <laughs> oh, I like uh, great music. I like playing video games. Why video games? Is it because you get it's like an escape for you? Atari 2600 in the mid to late 70s. Mm-hmm. So, you know, simpler games, uh, things like adventure, you know, you're a little cube on the screen and you kind of explore <laughs> and go yeah. to castle, castle, and you kill dragons or avoid dragons <laughs> you know, through mazes, you know, and it's just, it's blocky and it's, it's <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't matter because it was, you know, it's something that it's, it's like a, it's a game, you know, it was a fun little game that was casual. And so arcades were a big thing around that time, too. And we lived, uh, for a brief period of time, my family lived in uh, a, a more southern part of Northern California. And they had a Chuck E. Cheese there. And Chuck E. Cheese had an arcade. And if, this, if, you, if you can imagine that uh, arcade games between the years 1979 and 83, these are all the classics. you got your Space Invaders, your Pac-Man, your Galaga, your yeah. Crazy Climber. With the two handles, you go up the side of the building, you got major... Well, Tetris too, right? Hmm? Tetris? Eventually Tetris. I, I, I don't know if there was a, an arcade... Uh, there must have been an arcade standy of one, but I, I don't remember playing it. But they mm-hmm. had... Yeah, they had Don- oh, Donkey Kong, you know, all the all the classics because they were new at the mm-hmm. time. Yeah, so, uh, it, so there was this thing about, well, yeah, it costs money to go to the arcade and play video games. Why don't uh, we invest in a console and try to play these video games at home? And that's that's what, uh, you know... So anyway, that just sort of progressed. And then I, would, I actually stopped playing video games for a long period of time and then picked them up again. Uh, like I skipped 
the Nintendo Entertainment System. That was my thing. I'm I'm a little uh, I'm a little you know more uh, more into the uh, a little past that time you know, <laughs> or a little fo- fast forward a couple years and that's when I really got into it was like the Super Nintendo. Mario Kart was my jam. I would literally, I I would literally spend, I don't know, eight hours on weekends like with my buddy, and we would we would just do tournaments. Well, I never played Mario Kart, but I do like kart. It was a best of three. We had tournaments, so you had so we did Rain, Rainbow Road. I don't know if you're familiar with that. In Mario, you know, it was like a racetrack, and we would do like best of three. You know what I mean? And then, uh, so those times like that, I mean, you don't get that anymore with games like that. I mean, everything's all fast paced and, um, it's not this, I mean, true graphics are way better and they should be. It's 2020. So let's continue with this MTV discussion. Were you big into like music videos back then? Like what kind of music were you into? Rock? Like what was the music? What was young, uh, young Tyson? Well, you're still young. But what was Tyson uh, Sainer's uh, jams back in the day? Well, I really enjoyed the Beatles when I was young, very young. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed anything really melodic, and yet I also enjoyed Run DMC, De La Soul, and A Tribe Called Quest, and, yeah, like Afrocentric music. Uh, a lot of rap. Oh, Jackass. Yeah, Jackass. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. That was, that was you know, simple... That was a simple kind of comment, but that really, you know, is iconic. And it's the way he said it, too. It wasn't just, you know what I mean? It was his delivery. Mm-hmm. Yelling from a giant shopping cart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and Steve-O, I think Steve-O did like a, didn't Steve-O jump from a plane or something? He jumped from something. They all jumped from something. Oh, yeah. Well, I know he pole vaulted into some crazy crap sometimes. He did some crazy I mean, jump a while back. That's, that's didn't he get arrested for something once? For something he did? Oh, probably. He stapled his, one of his balls to his leg. <laughs> uh, years ago. Yeah, of course. Of course, like I said. That's probably the hardest thing to, to wrap my brain around is that when did Jackass 3D come out? Was it 2005? Jackass 3D came out in 2010. What? Really? So there was uh-huh. that much time between Jackass um, well, there Jackass was, 3D? There was, well, number two was in 20, is 2006. And okay. then they did the uncut or unrated Jackass 2.5 in 2017. Okay. But that was way down, down the line. But in 2007, I think they, they did some spinoffs. Like, you know what I mean? Steve-O was doing, you know, Dr. Steve-O, like I said. And and then, of course, Bad Grandpa, like I said, my favorite. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But Well, I'm not kidding, but <laughs> I'm kidding in the fact that it was good. No, it was just a stupid... You know, they're all they're all stupid. No offense to MTV and Johnny, but <laughs> we're talking about stupid slapstick stuff. Oh, sure, sure. Bad Grandpa was really stupid. You know, obviously everyone knows. You know the premise behind it, obviously, right? He uh, would dress I mean, up as a. Old age makeup. Is that the premise? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ding ding ding. <laughs> this is what they did for Jackass too with uh, Spike Jones and, and whatnot. Yeah. He would go around and he would go around and and scare people and, and do and just blindside them with stuff, you know. Well, he did something called the shoplifter in the first Jackass movie, where he's in a convenience store and just stuffing things into his coat, and then like mm-hmm. the, the store owner's just trying to get him out of the store, and he's walking really slowly, pretending to be an old man. He keeps grabbing things on the way out, and the store owner's like, "Give me that!" Give me that. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't quite say it like. He doesn't quite say it like butt at it, but it's it's yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can be checking oh. out uh, Jackass uh, four next year. Um, I feel like I will need to see uh, Jackass three <laughs> before I see four, just to get the connective tissue going. Mm-hmm. Because I I don't know though. There's, there's stuff in two that or, sorry, there's stuff in one rather that uh, that I really didn't enjoy watching again. I was like, oh god, I forgot about this bit. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, man. My favorite, like I said, is Wee Man because he would just, he would just be like, what up for whatever, you know, no complaints. Just you can do whatever the fuck you want with me, and I'll do it, <laughs> you know. There's a funny footage of uh, him and Preston Lacey dressed up as sumo 
wrestlers running down the street in Japan. I, that does sound familiar. I don't know if I've seen it, but that, that does kind of sound familiar. It's somewhere in the last third of the first movie. I just watched, like, rewatched it, like, for the first time in, I don't know, probably 15 years, like, over the last week, and I, I watched the bulk of it. Uh, less than 24 hours ago to, to take notes because I, I, I realized I wanted to take notes and it's like but I wrote down the, the sketch names as they happened and then like didn't write notes until I got to number nine and then I started writing extensive descriptions of what actually happened and it just so it could be oh rec- you talking about you you're talking about you wrote notes recently yeah yeah I wrote these like yesterday okay go so, ahead it's just descriptions of what happened so I can go through these real quickly so yeah go ahead Number two is uh, rent a car crash up derby. Does that sound familiar? Kind of. Yeah, they rent a, rent a <laughs> car and they destroy it. Yep. One called the muscle stimulator. <laughs> so they put, I don't know if you've ever uh, had any of these. Yeah, so it's these things that send electrical signals to your body. They contact diodes. like, And so they put they put, put them on Aaron McGee's like, pectorals and Knoxville runs the controls and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> figure out they've gotten one that's shaped kind of like a maxi pad and they said this one goes on the gooch and then they have to explain that the gooch is basically the taint but they don't call it the taint they call it the gooch and then explain yeah. it and so you understand that it's the taint they put that on Dave England actually yeah they put it on Dave and then they put it on Pontius' balls oh <laughs> yeah. god that's gotta hurt that, that was kind of funny that was pretty funny uh, then there's something called fatty fall down which is a reaction prank where uh, uh, Preston Lacey uh sits on a bench that collapses as people walk by to see if they'll like come and help him. Fireworks wake up. That's the one where Bam uh, sets off fireworks in his in his dad's uh, and mom's bedroom uh, in the middle of the night. It's like after midnight and still has to be up at like five in the morning. Uh, and then in the morning after, yeah, so they set off the fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the sound effects. Thanks. Cut to five hours later and Phil gets in his car and they put fireworks in his car. <laughs> that is freaking. Listen, give me the net give me the next best three, alright? Okay. I like the roller disco truck. Alright. I mean that's obviously pretty uh, self explanatory. Mm-hmm. That is a that is the back of an empty empty back of a truck that's been decked out like a roller disco party with streamers and disco balls. They're all in roller skates and in seventies outfits and then Preston Lacey drives the truck as they all slam around on the inside because they're all on roller skates. Um, reminded me of Party Monster, kind of. More Party Monster reminded me of that. Roller skates, man. I used to bust my ass all the time on those. I am I, <laughs> being candid. Oh, sure. Yeah, I, I used to love roller skates. Um, I, I couldn't quite do skateboard, but I like roller skates. Oh, me neither, man. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, Bam's mom says fuck. April Margera, which is Bam's mom, uh, who Phil and I guess, Mar- I don't know why, but like Bam lives in one of those households where he calls his parents by their first names. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, uh, uh, that's just a thing. I, it ha- doesn't happen where I, uh, <clears throat> doesn't happen in my household. Anyways, and also, it's not April, just April. Uh, they, each, they call her April. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, hey! Uh, anyway, so April Marger comes home at night to find, this is what I wrote, to find a large reptile in her house. Hilarity ensues. Yeah, so they put a crocodile or an alligator on the floor of the kitchen. And she's so scared that she, she, she's just, you know, is it well? She's, she's yelling, she's frightened. This actually made me laugh yesterday when I watched it, and I, I forgot how funny that was. Um, but then at some point she says, that's the scariest fucking thing I've ever seen. And, <laughs> and like, like, we got it, we got her to say something. And then they t- told her about it later, she's like, did I? I don't, because she didn't remember. Well, of course she's not going to remember. <laughs> right. The tidal wave, the tidal wave is pretty funny. That's a Knoxville where it's basically just a, probably like a storage crate, you know, like a shipping crate filled with water that they can suddenly like open up a door and it all comes rushing out. Mm-hmm. And he, and Knoxville's standing on a lawn. You know, I'm Johnny Knoxville, this is Tidal Wave. And then just <laughs> water, just you see it like, and he disappears. Like out of, he's, he's, he's gone. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to another camera angle and he's been swept 15, you know, mm-hmm. yards onto yeah. the sidewalk. That was pretty funny. And they show it from multiple angles, but that is a lot of water just hitting him at one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good one. Based on the list you have, do you see a lot of different, like, differentiality, I guess? Or are you looking at the list and saying, oh, similar, similar, similar? I don't know. I mean, they stick to kind of, they, they seem to stick to kind of, uh, to, to categories of things. So there's startle pranks, there's reaction pranks, mm-hmm. there's 
What's your favorite type? Like, what do you find the most um, humorous, I guess? I mean, I like, I like uh, stuff like, this is actually from Viva La Bam, when he built a skate rink inside his house. That's awesome. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. Like, I kind of like that sort of thing. There's not a lot of that in Jackass, but there's things like that. Um, I like when he pranks his family because they're just apparently just game for anything. And it's like, I love the crash ones. Like, they, they voluntarily run in the walls. They voluntarily... Jump on beds and, and crash, <laughs> you know. I'm surprised. Well, they do have a lot of permanent injuries, but they just, they're just so, they're just deranged. They have to be mentally deranged to do this. Like, I mean, adrenaline junkies, like maybe it comes with skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Are you a blood guy? Do you like to see people get injured? <laughs> real life. <laughs> well, this, so what you're saying, Tyson, is jackass isn't real life? Is that what you're saying? Um, you know, it's, it's it. his tattoo on the off road, and it's you know, it's it's all messed up, and he's still bleeding from that. That's okay, you know. But but, but like, I mean, I I like zombie movies because mm-hmm. yeah, partially because it's I know it's not real. It's just you know, it's really just great gross makeup. I mean, mm-hmm. If you look at the sales, like I briefly mentioned earlier, um, these guys were making you know. I don't know if they're million, uh, like each millionaire, but I, I would assume so. I assume they were getting a good cut. Uh, yeah, I heard. Well, Zebo <clears throat> actually mentioned that he didn't make very much money on the first season of Jackass, but I'm sure that changed afterwards. Mm-hmm. Because cause they pay based on like stunts. Uh, like if it was a really crazy stunt, they might pay five five hundred dollars. You know? Something else, it might be two hundred. So he made not a lot of money during that first season. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know what kind of. Uh, <laughs> you got any closing thoughts on Jackass? Like, what what do you think that its place in history is? Like television history? Like, um, I think it's probably in the category that would be shared with like something like Jim Rose's Circus Sideshow, where it's it's uh it's there's shock value, there's stunts, it's like you know it's it's acrobatics, it's kind of a it's like a circus. Um, it's just a different kind. Right. It's, it's like know, it's, a traveling, real life, crazy, you know. And the, the interesting thing about, or one of the most, I think, intriguing storylines, in my opinion, of the upcoming Jackass 4, is will they even physically be able to do the same shit? You know, they're not like super old, but they're definitely not as young as they used to be. So what limitations are they going to have um, just purely on age? I mean, we all get older. Yeah. Uh, those who made it there. So that's intriguing uh, to me is what physical would be more like my, you know, like, like verbal skits. You know what I mean? Like pranking, like e- doing easy pranks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rather than the physical it. stuff, you know? Yeah. Sure, it's choreographed. I mean, it's not as choreographed as wrestling is, but it's choreographed. But still, I mean, it's it's crazy shit. And they just repeatedly, repeatedly, it's like, what kind of mental space would do you have to be in to say, hey, I'm going to, hey, throw me off a, throw me off a whatever and let me land on something dangerous. It's like evil, evil, evil kind of stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think Jackass started, I think that's their place in history. I think you're right. Is they'll be, they'll be one of the, they'll right, be known as one of the first, um, like, really really, really popular slapstick stunt shows. The ones that kind of set the bar for others to follow. And to be honest, nothing's nothing's came close, in my opinion. There's ridiculousness that do that show video clips of it, but they don't actually, pref- you know, shows like that and Tosh.0, oh, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with Daniel Tosh, but they do video, they do videos, but they don't actually perform it, it themselves. And I think that Jackass has set a bar that will be pretty hard to um, top, especially in today's uh, society. I agree. I you think, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I'm glad they have the disclaimer on those shows because the stuff they're doing really is dangerous. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, yeah. they call themselves prof- professionals and it's like, you know, yeah, it's like the stuff they're doing is is, is difficult. Don't try it at home. You know, <laughs> All that shit. You know, it's like, it's... 
like a circus. It's like yeah. I'm not a trained acrobat, so I'm not going to try to do the tightrope. I'm not going to try yeah. to do the uh, what's that? The trapeze because I haven't trained to do that. So yep. <laughs> as, as fun as it might look, I I have a little one to take care. Of. One last thing um, before we end this. How are you doing through the, um, how's the family and everything to, through this uh, rough time, you know, with the um, everything going on in society? How are you guys doing? Well, we're being careful. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got, uh, you know, I've got a 17-month-old uh, baby. Oh, wow. And elderly parents, so i got to be careful. I wear a mask out in public. Right, is that and mandatory that's... yet? And, uh, yeah, there's, uh, well, not quite like New York. There's, uh, the advisory is... Yeah, Newsom, Gavin Newsom, the governor, was saying they should wear a mask out in public. The thing is, I've been wearing masks out in public since probably March. Really? I would say. Good for you, because that's longer than what I can March. say. Well, that's the, that's the thing. It's like, I, you know, there's there's a lot of people who are really against wearing the masks. Mm -hmm. There's some really heated discussions. But one it's gone political, said, too, oh, unfortunately. It's gotten political. Oh, it's way too political. I mean, the, the, the simplest way I've heard it put is that a person says... I wear this mask to protect you. You wear your mask to protect me. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And by the way, they don't let you in. A yeah, you don't do it. Yeah, you don't do it for your. You don't do it for yourself. You do it for the person next to you. Yeah, and you do it for the person who is not uh, who's, who's vulnerable. Yeah, I still see videos of people hanging out with parties over twenty, and I'm like, yes. what? Yeah. You know, there's still videos coming out online. I'm like, I don't know. Anyways. All right, well, you got anything to, uh, what's your social media handles? Oh, well, I am at R-E-V-T-2-3, or RevT-23 is how that's uh, pronounced, uh, on Twitter, it's, uh, Instagram, and Skype. I also have a website under my name, Tyson Saner, as T-Y-S-O-N-S-A-N-E-R.com, where you can find links to all my stuff, uh, and also some of my wife's stuff, because she has a gaming show, too. Oh, um, really? Go ahead and plug that. Go ahead and plug that. Oh. What's that about? Oh, well, her, her thing was she would play games that she would never consider playing. Like, uh, she tends to have very kind of set things of what she likes out of video games. So she, uh, so it's called Gaming Outside My Comfort Zone. So our first episode was some years ago in this game called Limbo, which is a little platformer that's black and white and kind of dreamlike and has a giant spider in it. She hates spiders, so that's <laughs> like, uh, so, so that was, that was her, uh, her show that she's still actually... She's doing some new episodes at some point. Um, they will be released. Um, yeah, there's a you know, suck attack shut in. There's antisocial show. There's these are they're all all links to that. My SoundCloud's got my music on it. Um, if anybody's interested in hearing any of that, um, yeah. But just that's also where antisocial show is housed is on my SoundCloud. So it's got that show and music. Um, I would recommend actually going back and listening to maybe the Jesse Camp interview because that was fun. Uh, yeah, pretty much anything. Jesse Gamp is a great guest, by the way. You should you should uh, consider uh, reaching out to him if you if you've not had him on the show before. It will give give him my information if you. Uh, I'm, I okay. mean, and uh, have him con you know give him my email address, and uh, we'll see what happens. You know. All right, Tyson. Well, I appreciate your uh, time this evening. Oh, no, no, thanks for having me on. It was um it was a true pleasure going down um memory lane of one of the most memorable series of all time. Well, I'm glad. It, yeah, it certainly is memorable. I mean, good <laughs> Lord, some of the stuff I just can't unsee. Yeah, I know. Um, all right, I think that's a wrap. Um, feel free to have me on uh, Have me on your uh, your epic um, series you got, uh, Anti-Social Show. Do you, take, uh, do you take guests on that show? Absolutely. <laughs> all right, yeah, well, keep, keep, me in, them. keep me in mind, okay? <laughs> all right man uh take care okay you too uh, john thank you for having me on the show yeah and talk to you soon okay there you have it that was tyson saner um fantastic guest um great podcaster i love his drive for podcasting you know as we head into our 100th episode I feel like Sensibly Cynical is just getting started. You can check us out on Twitter at Cynical Sensibly, Instagram Sensibly Cynical Pod, and you can check out our Facebook group. If you could please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, it would be highly, highly appreciated. Thank you, 
and have a blessed night.